All right. Hi, everyone. Today, we're going to start chapter one, which is just an introduction to biology. So we're just going to look at what is biology, um, what's kind of a broad idea of what biologists do and what do they study. And then finally, we're going to look at the eight characteristics um, that are used to classify something as being alive. All right. So let's start and just look at the word biology. So if you look at the word biology, notice it starts with bio, okay? So bio, um, it's Greek origin, and it just means life. And then if we look at the second half of the word, it's the ology, um, which comes from the Greek word logos, which means study, okay? So when we're looking at biology, we are looking at the study of life. So what is it that biologists actually do? Okay, so if someone becomes a biologist, um, they're going to study living things or they will pose questions about how living things interact with the environment. So to give you kind of a more idea of, or a better idea of what that might look like, a biologist might study the origins and the history of life. They might study once living things. They might study the structures of living things. They might study how living things interact with one another, and they might study how living things function. So in addition to what they study here, these are kind of broad topics. Yesterday, you should have done an assignment um, using just page five and six from the textbook where you looked at what do biologists do. So that took a little bit of a deeper dive and gave you some more specific ideas. So just to refresh your memory yesterday, you should have read a little bit about um, how biologists might study the diversity of life. They might research disease. They might develop technologies. They might improve agriculture, or they may help preserve the environment. And then finally, if biologists are going to study life, we have to ask the question, what is life? How do you decide if something is alive? or not alive, or once was alive. So biologists have come up with eight characteristics that they use of criteria um, to classify something as being alive. So the eight characteristics are, they have to be made up of one or more cells, display organization, grows and develops, reproduces, responds to stimuli, requires energy, maintains homeostasis, and adaptations evolve over time. So if something meets all eight of these criteria, then they would be characterized or classified as living. Now, if something only meets a seven or six or five or four or less, um, they are not living, okay? So you have to meet all eight to be considered living. So let's look at these char characteristics a little bit more in depth. So our first characteristic is it has to be made up of one or more cell. So um, there are a lot of organisms out there that are just made up of one cell. So we would call that unicellular. Um, and bacteria is a great example. So there are many bacteria that are just unicellular. The other option is if something is made up of many cells, we would call that multicellular. So an example would be animals. Um, I have a plant, okay, so those would be multi-mini cells. And then finally, in your notes, I do want you just to put the definition of cells, okay? So cells are the basic unit of structure and function in all living things. The second characteristic um, that something that's alive has to have is it has to display organization, and that pretty much means exactly how it sounds. It has to be organized or it has to be arranged in an orderly way. Um, so if something is alive, you can break it down. It starts all the way to atoms. And then those atoms combine to form molecules. Molecules can combine to form amino acids. Amino acids combine to form proteins and so on. And so as you um, keep on combining, you also are increasing in your complex complexity. Okay. And so each organized structure has a specific function. Okay. 
Um, so if we just talk about like a human, right? Your amino acids have a very specific function and so do your proteins, but your proteins have a different function. At kind of a broader level, um, I have the skeleton here, right? So you have a skeletal system. You have a circulatory system. You have a respiratory. You have your digestive. You have your muscular. And then I think this is your nervous system, right? So those are all different ways you're organized, but they all have different functions. Our third characteristic is it has to grow and develop. So most organisms begin as just one cell, and over time they will form um, new cells and become multicellular. So as a human, think about when you were just a little fetus, you basically began as one cell, and over time you've developed into many, many, many cells. Okay? Um, in addition to just growing more cells, um, your mass also is going to grow over time. Um, so again, think about your birth weight. When you were born, it's possible you know this number. Um, if not, you can go ask someone in your family if they know how much you weighed when you were, when you were born, but it was probably around seven pounds, probably plus or minus a pound or so. Um, but now you weigh more than seven pounds, right? You probably weigh a hundred pounds more. Um, so in addition to just forming new cells over your lifetime, you also acquire more mass throughout your lifetime. And then second, um, you have to undergo development, okay? So development is just natural changes that take place during the course of your lifetime, okay? Um, so like if you think about you, you do not look the way you looked when you were a newborn child, right? You have gone through a lot of growth and a lot of development, over your past 15 or so years. Okay. Um, another example, I have the stages of a butterfly, right? You start as an egg, you grow and develop into a caterpillar, um, and so on until you get into a butterfly. All right, the next characteristic is you have to be able to reproduce. Okay. Um, so by reproduce, it means you have to produce offspring. Okay, so Offspring is going to be the word that you're probably going to see um, more often in biology. Okay, so make sure you have that word. Um, you are the offspring of your parents. Okay, I have children. My children are my offspring. So when you pass your genes down, that's your offspring. Um, one thing I do want to point out, being able to reproduce is not an essential characteristic for individual organisms. Um, so what I mean by that, many of you probably have like a pet cat or a dog at home. And how many of you have either neutered or spayed your pet? I'm hoping you guys are raising your hands right now as you're watching me. Right. So just because my dog is neutered, does that mean that he's not alive anymore? And the answer to that is no, right? My dog is still living, although he's neutered. Right, so it's dogs as a species are able to reproduce. So I hope that kind of, um, it makes sense and kind of brings you some clarity. And then that just brings me to another vocab word. Okay, so I want to talk about species. Okay, um, so in order for something to be considered a species, you have to have a group of organisms that can breed with one another and produce fertile offspring. Okay, so let's talk about what that means. So again, if you can create offspring, it means like your baby, right? You've got to be able to pass your genes on to the next generation. Um, but fertile means is that your offspring is also able to produce their own offspring um, when the time is right. So probably an example that you guys have heard of um, of a species versus a non-species is going to be mules, right? So a mule is created when you have a horse that breeds with a donkey. Um, so horses are species, okay? So they can breed with one another. Their offspring can also breed and create more horses. Donkeys are also species, same story for donkeys. But when you mix a horse and a donkey, you get a mule. Now, a mule 
it's a real thing, right? The mule will survive and live, but mules cannot breed together and actually create viable offspring. They will never make it to birth. Um, so because of that, mules aren't species. So then does that mean mules are considered to be alive or not alive? So take a second and think about that. So go ahead and pause the video and think about that. All right, so if you didn't go um, Google the answer, I'll tell it to you. So even though mules cannot produce um, their own offspring, they are still alive um, and it's because they can reproduce on a cellular level, okay? So they can reproduce their cells. Um, they just aren't producing their own large offspring, okay? So mules, um, still alive, just not a species. All right, our next characteristic is it has to respond to stimuli. So before I explain this one, um, we just need to go over some quick vocab words, okay? So the external environment, think of external Okay, external should mean outside. So your external environment is everything around whatever object you're looking at, okay? Um, the other word we need to know is internal environment, okay? Internal means inside. So that would be all things inside whatever you're looking at, okay? So then we define a stimulus as a change to either environment, that's gonna cause a reaction by that organism, okay? So a stimulus can be a change on either the external environment or the internal environment, okay? Um, and then the response is the actual reaction, okay? Um, so I have a couple examples. Um, so one, our textbook gives the example of sharks smelling blood in the water, okay? So um, when blood hits the water, that would be an external change in the environment. Um, and it's going to change what the shark does. When the shark senses that blood, it's going to go swim towards it. Um, another example are sunflowers. I don't know if any of you guys have seen our sunflower fields nearby, um, but sunflowers, when it's sunny out, where do they point? They're always pointing at the sun, right? So wherever the sun moves, that's a change to their external environment. Um, and the sunflowers are respond. They're gonna tilt their flower towards that sun. Okay. Um, and then response to stimuli, this one is so critical for safety and survival. Okay. Um, let's just see if we go back to sharks, right? So sharks being able to respond to smelling blood, it helps them find food, which is what they need to survive. Same thing for the sunflower, they need sun. Um, to carry out their cellular processes. All right, our next char characteristic is it has to require energy, okay? Um, so you have to use energy to fuel your life functions, okay? Um, and then there's two ways you can get energy. So there are some organisms that make their own, okay? Those are called autotrophs. Um, so that would be like a plant or a flower. And then there's also organisms that are going to consume energy. We call those heterotrophs, and that would be like us, right? We need to eat food to get our energy. All right, our seventh characteristic is you have to maintain homeostasis. Um, so, so that means you have to regulate your internal conditions to maintain life. Um, so an example for this one, I'm going to use athletes. How many of you have ever played a sport or you like to watch sports? Um, if an athlete travels to a high altitude location, they have to travel a few days prior uh, before their competition to allow their blood and their hemoglobin um, to receive that oxygen. It takes their body a couple of days um, to reestablish that homeostasis so then that they can get the oxygen their body needs, and then they can perform the sport um, to their highest potential, okay? Um, so in order to be alive, your body needs to be able to adapt to different environments. Um, same thing like if it's super hot outside, what does your body do to cool itself off? I hope you're all saying sweat in your head or 
what does your body do to try to warm you up when you're super cold, right? And you should be shivering. Um, so if you're alive, your body is going to regulate your internal conditions that's going to help you maintain your life. And then finally, our eighth characteristics is adaptations are going to evolve over time. Okay. Um, so an adaptation is just an inherited trait that results from species over lots of time and lots of generations. Okay. Um, so an example here, I have a leaf in the rainforest, okay, and it over time it's created a drip leaf. Okay. At one point, the leaf was probably more rounded where water could pool. And over time it has learned and it's adapted to having a drip leaf to let the water drip off of it. So it's enabled that species to survive. Okay. And when it survives, it can pass its genes to offspring. Okay, so if that plant survives, it can make its next offspring and then that offspring survives and it passes its genes down the line, um, which is how you get these adaptations that can evolve over many generations. All right, so that is a wrap um, for what we're going to cover today. So the big idea that I want you to take away today is these eight characteristics um, that is something has to have in order to be classified as living. And just remember, you have to have all eight, okay? So all eight have to be present to be considered living.